Hi, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Clear to Sand podcast, the last one of 2020, episode number 250. And I, I think it's been quite uh, the journey getting here. It's been quite the year. Uh, and so I'm joined with Francois, my co-host. How are you doing, Francois? I'm, I'm very good. Thank you, Roel. How are you? I'm doing well. I got my early morning start today. I actually woke up at four in the morning. I, I, I want some of you guys to try doing that. Um, I actually just mm-hmm. couldn't go go back to sleep. I woke up at four and and then just stayed up. <laughs> that That's good. At least you get some stuff done in the morning, right? Before everyone wakes up. Yeah, exactly. I got some exercise in, so I'm, I'm ready to go. I've got a, a, a green juice here um, just to keep me a little bit energized. So uh, we're ready to talk about this review of um, of 2020, right? 2020 year in review, where we just kind of talk about the show, what we've learned, and and we want to hear from you guys as well, the listeners, because we want to know um, what you guys want to hear in 2021 or what you guys want to see as we go into this new year. And um, I, I guess like the, the real, the, the, the thing to note here is... Uh, we, well, first, thanks to everyone who who listens to the show, right? Um, we really appreciate people who uh, participate, uh, listen, comment, leave comments in there, and also suggest topics and participate in our Slack channel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and twenty twenty was a special year, I guess not not just for <laughs> us, but uh, for everyone. Uh, um, and in, actually for us, it, for the podcast, it allowed us to do a couple of new stuff uh, that we'll talk about probably um, it, it, today. And then um, maybe today we can also talk about next year, 2021, and um, you know what we're thinking of, of doing uh, for 2021. And, and if you guys have some suggestions as well, you can, you can feel free to uh, let us know. Uh, Roel put up a, a form, a survey form. Uh, that we do usually at the end of the year. So if you go to cleartosend.net slash survey, you'll be able to answer the, the form. It's it's not too long. It takes like five minutes. Yeah, we want to... Uh, it just helps us. Yeah, it just helps us mm-hmm. uh, kind of gather the topics that we want to ta- um, discuss on the show. And, and just to let you guys... There's already nine people who have submitted their response. So right away, we know that deep dives is still um, a hot topic. And... Uh, that's what people want to want to listen to and also getting to know some networking and wireless news. And we do quite a bit of that as well, but we're trying to get more surveys in there, more results so we can start planning for 2021. Those deep dives do take some time. Uh, and, and I think we, we tried a lot of those this year and, I guess we found that even in a pandemic, it was pretty difficult to plan some of these deep dives because mm-hmm. we ended up getting busy, right? I thought I would have more time to to do a lot of things, but then it just got busier, uh, I think, after the summer. And uh, mm-hmm. so here we are, right? Uh, that whole time just was a blur. <laughs> yeah, and, and deep dives uh, takes us more time to prepare, right? We have to do uh, research, we have to do test uh, in our labs and and all of this so obviously they're they're episode that brings more value but it's also for us it takes more time to prepare them yeah exactly so sometimes not always easy yeah for sure and and the the survey will also let us know about uh who you are as a listener what you guys want to um actually where you're from uh we just try to gather a lot of information about who our listeners are because you you may know a lot about us you you see us and hear us often as we publish new episodes but we don't get to know about who our listeners are so that's one way to to let us know uh how to, how else to cater some of these episodes for you and bring more value to your day uh, i know a lot of our episodes tend to be about 60 minutes long. So we want to be sure we try to add a lot of uh, content that will be useful for you. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So let's talk about some of the highlights then of, of 2020, which we actually hit an all time, um, 525,000 downloads all time. So that's over the course of five years, five years now, I think we're approaching on six years for this podcast and um, 
we published, uh, I think this, this episode is the 47th episode of this year and we're now at 250. So we're approaching about 15,000 mm-hmm. downloads a month. We're not, we're not quite like those other networking podcasts where, uh, they get maybe 15,000 a day, <laughs> but we're, we're more nice. niche, right? <laughs> we're, we're focused on, yeah. on Wi-Fi. We try to keep it that way and, and try to be more, uh, Wi-Fi centric. So that way it's just focused on a single topic in which we also, the both of us end up learning a lot more about. Mm -hmm. And that's something we enjoy doing as well. So helps us keep go, keep moving forward and keep going. Uh, the, yeah, the 500,000 mark, uh, I usually, I usually call it the half million mark. It's a six (laughs) year, right? (laughs) So, uh, so we, we reached half a million of downloads, which is quite impressive if you think about it. Um, yeah. And uh, so I was, we hit that, I think it's September, October, I want to say. Or yeah, maybe, was, maybe in November. Yeah, Yeah, I was just uh, trying to see um, which, it was when I was looking at some of the top episodes and I noticed we were over 500,000. I was like, whoa, that's a pretty big deal yeah. because we don't advertise the, the podcast that much, right? We only just use Twitter or LinkedIn, but we're not, mm-hmm. uh, and, and a lot of people just find us through maybe searching for something like Wi-Fi 6, then they'll maybe come across our podcast. Mm-hmm. But we are very specialized in that. Um, it, it was a, a quite the achievement to make it to 500,000 for uh, what I think is still mm-hmm. a small podcast, right? It's just you and I, Francois making episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of times we come down to the last uh, minute with episodes because, uh, Mm -hmm. we both work, uh, quite a bit, right? You're teaching, you, you've got your own business. Um, I have a full-time job, which then I also have a side job doing uh, a fi consulting like, like you. So it, we, we try to find this time in between where we dedicate to, to learning and then recording these episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then per month, like 50,000 per month, which is, um, I mean, our, our average download is usually increasing month over month. And so this, um, yeah, for this year, we reached the 15,000 per month, uh, which is quite nice. And then if you look at you know, the number of average downloads per episode, I think we're around like 2000, uh, now, um, which is, which is pretty good. We used to be around 1500. So numbers are increasing a little bit. So it's nice to see on our side, uh, that more and more people are interested in, in the podcast. In Wi-Fi, Yeah. I don't know if it's more mm-hmm. people that are having to deal with Wi-Fi, So they're starting to look up some of these topics or, or maybe some of our episodes are starting to reach more people, but uh, it could be a combination mm-hmm. of both, right? And um, and mm-hmm. and that wouldn't be uh, we wouldn't be as that successful uh, if it wasn't for some of the people who do share our episodes. So uh, I do appreciate everyone who's done that on on social media, and for anyone um, who mentions it wherever. I know some people learn about the podcast through a a course or training that was done. Um, I think some of your colleagues mm-hmm. over at the Echo Training, Francois sometimes mention some of the episodes. So I think that's, uh, I just want to give them thanks for, for doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. We, so now that we have 250 episodes, I I usually find myself, like if I have, even when I'm teaching and I have a student asking me a question, um, if, you know, most of the time we have an episode that talks about it for an hour. (laughs) So I would just answer the question and I would say, if you want to, you know, learn a little bit more about it, you should check out that episode. And I have like a list of, episode I mentioned often, like the one we did on MIMO, the one we did on shadow bonding, uh, the one we did on, you know, 11 K R and all of this. So all of these episodes are, they're, they're nice. If you're just learning and you want to kind of understand what it's all about, you can just listen to these and, uh, and you get a better idea. I mean, we talk about them for these topics for an hour. So you get a little bit more than just, you know, five minutes in a, in a class. Yeah. And I think that brings up a good point about some of those topics. Uh, one of some of the question or results from the survey was, uh, people wanting more CWNA level topics. And I think, mm-hmm. um, it would, it would be good to try to resurface some of those older episodes where we did talk about CWNA and, and do some refreshers. So mm-hmm. that's something we could probably look into 
uh, as a series in 2021, um, because CWNA is a topic we'll, we'll want to address, especially on our course side, uh, which we'll talk mm -hmm. about, about later, but we do want to give out also, some, also, okay. I was going to say, that's also one, the, one of the goal we have for the podcast mm -hmm. is can I introduce the people to Wi-Fi and educate, you know, yeah. other network engineers to the Wi-Fi technology. So we have. Uh, you know, uh, in general, hopefully better deployments out there, um, yeah, exactly. and better Wi-Fi. And, yeah. and I it's think it's an ambitious um, goal, but it's <laughs> maybe a, it's, we can help. Yeah, it is an ambitious goal because I think we uh, announced it like in summer, and it hasn't even been completed yet. But mm -hmm. uh, we're we're working on it still. It's just a matter of um, finding that time and and making. Uh, choices with you know work life balance and and trying to mm -hmm. dedicate time to things that we need to do uh but of course like the we, we try to keep these episodes weekly and and i think that becomes a challenge when you and i are both either traveling or unavailable and uh mm -hmm. recording tends to be a, a challenge for that um but we would like to structure some of those episodes that we do have and put it into a more uh, formal and longer uh, format, uh, something that's more organized so you can go through it easily and, and have it available to you just to be able to go back and, and look at that mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. Why don't we All give right. out some shout outs to uh, some, some very helpful people, especially in our Slack channel. So if you haven't, joined our Slack channel. We have some pretty good conversations there about Wi-Fi. So if you go to cleardescend.net uh, join slash join dash Slack, you'll be able to get into our channel. And um, it, it, there's not uh, like a ton of conversations that happen there where you have to catch up. It's still a fairly mm -hmm. small group, which I like because um, mm -hmm. a lot of times I can't catch up with a lot of conversations, especially with with Twitter, for example. But here we have uh, individuals who, who are very willing to share their experiences, uh, respond to people, and, and there's no short of uh, like bad questions, right? We're very open to uh, accepting people, knowing that uh, we have beginners or or we also have a lot of experts there who will provide their um, expertise to you and their opinions on how to approach certain things. Or, or you maybe have a technical question on a specific technology uh, that, that occurs and somebody might know the answer. So the, the first one like who... A question on Wi-Fi 6 and Garamond knows the answer. Yeah, and that's the first <laughs> shout out is Garamond uh, has very detailed responses um, to, to Wi-Fi mm -hmm. 6. And, and I think that um, I was looking at a, a thread where he just goes into such good detail on that content. I think he is the guy that, that really understands the protocol and... Um, I don't know how he did it, but he he can pull out that information easily. And he happens to be a finalist for um, the I, the Wi-Fi Awards and also mm -hmm. the Cisco IT Blog Awards. And um, really, wow! Yeah, That's that, that awesome. the the Cisco IT Blog Awards I think was just announced on the on December seventeenth. So by the time we we have this episode, I don't know how long that. Um, how long mm -hmm. that uh, the voting goes on to. Uh, so I don't know if this episode will still, when it goes published at the end of the year, I don't know if um, that voting, the voting will still be live. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have uh, Carlos who, who uh, has been a big supporter of our show. So uh, he comes with like a really big friendly, um, uh, attitude. attitude. Yeah, yeah. Brings uh, kind of that, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's sunshine. Like, yeah, sunshine. <laughs> sunshine to the to the group. So he he likes to chime in, especially when it comes to um, uh, very uh, specific cases and warehouses where you're dealing maybe with zebra scanners. And I know I've asked him a couple of questions about a particular mm -hmm. scanner, which he seems to know all of them, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always a. Uh, Good. And he's reviewed our, our first course and, and uh, we appreciate his, his feedback. Then we have Lariana 
from Brazil, which has been supporting us as well, listening to the podcast. Uh, she helped us also review the course when we uh, published our first course this year. So she was a, she was a big, uh, big help, big supporter, always with a big smile, uh, happy to help. So it's, uh, it's a lot of, uh, it's nice. It's, uh, for us, it's a lot of support. Um, uh, and we have Keith as well, uh, Keith Parsons, uh, he comes on the channel and help us out, answer questions. And, uh, he's been sharing some of the videos he's been creating as well this year, um, which are very helpful for, for, you know, our, our listeners as well. It's like quick answers to quick questions you might have, um, in a video format. And I think it, it, it can help the listeners as well. Yeah, uh, for sure. That was very nice to have that shared in, in the Slack group. Um, yeah. And, and then we, we have Matt, uh, the yeah. one fine ninja. One uh, half Matt of the ninjas. Us as well too. <laughs> yeah, half of the, half of the sword. Um, help us to review the, the course as well this year. So well, we, uh, we appreciate that. And uh, it's, uh, it's nice. It's, it, it was nice feedback for us since it was our first, uh, first course we're developing online. Yeah, for sure. So thank, thanks guys for, for the support and, and we're starting to get more people into the, the Slack channel. So, uh, I'm starting to see some people come up and start having more conversations, some who are more in, in the group more than others. And, uh, looking forward to seeing how that group kind of develops for the yeah. next year. And also we have different channels, uh, for different topics. And then you're going to have people that, kind of only interact in different channels depending on their interest. So it's, you don't have to go over there and just, you know, um, talk on the, in the general channel all the time. You can just pick, pick your interest. And if you're interested in, in, I don't know, Cisco or Ruba, or if you're interested in, in, um, like Python and whatnot, you can just choose the channels you want to interact with. Yeah. It's not always about Wi-Fi too. So we have some casual, uh, channels mm -hmm. there, uh, especially with, with uh, my favorite, which is Mandalorian. And that comes out, there's the final season that comes out today, which I'm excited about. <laughs> but no spoilers, we don't talk about. about, we don't talk about spoilers. It's probably the only show I should, that I watch. <laughs> I should I should create a soccer channel and then I can talk about soccer. You should, yeah. You, you know what I've been watching <laughs> is uh, uh, Incredible Soccer Goals. I watched that last night. I, I think I watched about 20 mm. minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, I, I'm nice. getting there. I don't I don't know the names of the players except for uh, Ronaldo. So <laughs> okay, yeah, you. <laughs> it's a good start. I mean, it's a good start. That's it. He has the most, uh, number of followers on, on Instagram, I think. So yeah, it's a good start. <clears throat> All right. So uh, going back to the episodes, uh, I, I think one of the the coolest things that we had this year, especially during the pandemic, is we mm -hmm. we got to about. Uh, 17,500 downloads in one month, which happened that's in our um, maximum. That, yeah. Yeah. That's the highest this year. And I don't know what it was because it was in the middle of the uh, pandemic. And I honestly didn't think people were going to be listening to, to a uh, podcast mm -hmm. uh, this year <laughs> because I usually listen Let, to them. Let's commute. Right. Yeah. I usually mm -hmm. listen to them when I'm traveling or driving, uh, walking somewhere. And, and I, I, I really haven't been listening to many podcasts this year, uh, just producing them. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of the same for me. I used to listen to the podcast traveling, um, except I also listen to my like soccer podcast. And I listen to them like every day, no exception, but, um, <laughs> but for the more like, I guess, technical podcast usually I, I listen to them on the road but this year i found myself just watch uh more watching them on youtube or listening to them on youtube while I, I was working so maybe people do that as well they just listen while they work and if yeah. they're doing a task that doesn't require you know full brand attention they can just listen to the podcast as they work yeah it's either that or uh, maybe you started listening to us from spotify because i, I notice a lot of people have been migrating mm -hmm. their podcast podcasts over to spotify since that contains everything nowadays um mm -hmm. but but some of the episodes that uh made it to the top 10 actually we'll put the top 10 list on the show notes uh but we'll talk about the top five so the first the the the, the 
biggest episode this year for us was uh, episode number 205, which was five tips for migrating to the Cisco Catalyst 9800. So that was a big one for people who wanted mm-hmm. to, I guess, upgrade their controllers and migrate over to the the, the latest controller from, from Cisco, which I think was... A, a pretty good episode because um, it's a very different platform and we had a special guest yeah. on that episode. Yeah, we had Dave Benham and I guess that's uh, another shout out we can give to Dave because he came on and then he just uh, shared his experience working. So he works for VAR and so he had a lot of experience working with the Catalyst platform for his customers at the very, very early ages. Yeah. Uh, and if you go, I guess if you go back to the show notes, you'll see that Dave on his website, he has like a very detailed guide on how to do it step by step. Mm-hmm. And I've used it on my end. It's really, really good. Um, and it, so Dave just came in and then talked about his five tips, uh, uh, things you need to try to avoid when you do this work. And um, if you if you actually have to do this work for for for, for your customer or for just your job, uh, you'll see that it's going to save you a little bit of time knowing about these different tips. So um, I think it's very practical uh, um, episode, I guess. That's why it was popular because yeah. people can actually, it's, it brings value to people right away to some engineers that work with Cisco uh, controllers. And um, it, it is it, it is a really good episode. Yeah, I thought it was probably good timing. And then uh, mm-hmm. the following episode after that happened to be the second most popular episode, which was about 80 to 11K. Uh, so I thought that was interesting that that made it to number two and then number three was how does an antenna work? And I remember that episode, that episode, I learned, uh, a lot about (laughs) antennas. Um, Uh, there was so much I didn't know. And I think I listened to that maybe two or three times because it was just one of those episodes where. I, I really wanted to understand it. It's just, there's just some topics about Wi-Fi that kind of blow my mind right the physics part um how much mm-hmm. math is involved and then you throw in an antenna and it just confuses me <laughs> yeah and we had for this one we had ben from the uk uh talking about antennas and his job is just he's like a i guess uh rf engineer so he designed antennas right for right. you know for every day and he really understand the physics behind it. So it's like you said, it's those type of episodes where you listen to them and then you pause and like you do some research on Google and then you come back to it. <laughs> and then yeah. it, it takes you a little while to kind of wrap your, your head around these uh, subjects. Um, but it's it's really good, um, I guess, general information for us uh, Wi-Fi engineers. It helped us to understand a little bit better, you know, how Wi-Fi, uh, how antenna works, design, you yeah. know, how we can use them in our environment and so on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then the next episode, uh, which uh, kind of ties to 11K, the second episode uh, is episode number 211 it is a look into 802.11v. And so mm-hmm. I guess people were really into roaming and un- trying to understand um, some radio measurements and, and how this works. And I, I don't know if there was some sort of trend this year about uh, using 802.11k and v together. Maybe they, because no one, uh, the the... 802.11r episode didn't even make the list. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then yeah, to round it uh, out, yeah. to, to round it out, the fifth one is your your episode, uh, episode number 209, Python and Wi-Fi, which I thought was very enlightening and, and seeing uh, you progress in your Python skills this year because uh, we've had a lot of offline discussion about Python and, and trying to work with Python and Wi-Fi together, right? How can we leverage uh, some automation in order to be more efficient with Wi-Fi? Yeah, I've been um, I've been playing with Python quite a bit this year. I've been really enjoying it. Um, and uh, my, my skills in Python also improved this year. Um, and so now I find myself a little bit more comfortable working with different things, um, especially when it comes to, you know, interacting with Mist. So the Mist API, you know, I, I'm working more and more with that. I have my own uh, library that I've developed to interact with the Mist API that allows me to be a little bit faster now when I have to come up with scripts 
And so when I have people or customer asking me, you know, to help them for scripting, now I have a set of tools that I can kind of reuse. Um, and, and that, that journey just, uh, taught me a lot about Python and, you know, how to create your own uh, libraries and, and all of this and how to share it with people. And, and so, so the, um, it was, it was really good for me. Um, and also I've done some work to interact with Ikeha project files, uh, in order to kind of improve my workflow, work with customers, be more efficient, um, be faster when, when I have to work on design, exporting information, uh, collaborating with my customers. So it's, it's just a nice way and, and, um, a, a nice tool, like you said, to kind of help us as Wi-Fi engineers, be more efficient, be more consistent, um, and uh, it's uh, it's it's the future, right? Uh, it's going to yeah. be part of our the skills that we're going to require in the future to to work as Wi-Fi guys, and we start to see it more and more in the field as more and more systems have APIs, and in in the future, that's that's what you know is going to be required yeah. of us is can we actually make every every platform we use talk together and 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 so it's it's important. Um, if you guys go back to that episode, I guess you'll you'll hear us more talk about that. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a, maybe in twenty twenty one we'll do more of these because uh, I, I think I'll keep on working on Python, uh, just try different things. So maybe you'll you'll just keep on hearing us talking about it. Awesome. So to see the rest of the, the the top ten, head over to the show notes. There's a couple more episodes in there, especially with uh, some guests. So once we looked at these episodes, we wanted to know where are our listeners coming from? Where are, are they all in the United States? Are they all in Canada? So we also developed a list of top 10 countries that are, are listening to the episode, are trying to learn more about Wi-Fi. And so this rounds out, we'll talk about the top five, but uh, the first one is United States. Uh, that was, I guess, an obvious one since I, the, the, the show started in the United States but it then started to go across the pond. So United Kingdom is the second on our list. Mm -hmm. And then third is where you are, Francois, Canada. Yeah. So, and then fourth is Australia, which is yeah. good. And then fifth is India. So there's a, a lot a of lot, uh, yeah. Commonwealth countries. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> the queen is ruling. <laughs> she must be sharing the episodes as she tours. Uh, yeah, something. <laughs> no, it just it's makes only. sense because the show is in English, right? So yeah, you have all yeah. the English-speaking countries, I guess. Exactly. So, um, yeah. but it's then, great to uh, you, see so that you they all, come. I was just saying, yeah, it's, it's great it's, to hear them come from different countries and. Um, I, I haven't had anyone asked if we could do it in a different language, but I, I think Francois, like you, you, yeah. you have tried doing it in a different, in, in uh, French and, and I'm sure like some of those guys would, uh, would love to hear this in a different yeah. language, but I guess we, we do have, uh, an international crowd and in the Slack room, mm -hmm. um, there are people who, you know, try their best with the, with the English, uh, language and, and they, they're, mm -hmm. it seems to be, um, making its way, uh, like Wi-Fi is like understandable yeah. across all these different countries. Yeah, you're right. And, uh, so when we look at the stats, obviously the U S is where most of the listeners are, are from. Uh, but we, we starting, like you say, we're starting to see more and more countries coming in. Uh, and you only gave the top five, but if you look at the top 10, we have also more countries from Europe, Germany, Sweden, Netherlands, yeah. France, Japan. I'm Absolutely. happy. I'm happy to see France because I've been doing a lot of <laughs> <laughs> a lot of advertisement in France for people to listen to the show, and I'm happy to see that we made it to the top ten. So thank you guys. Merci. <laughs> and maybe may, I know I know the French guys want to do a podcast in, in French, um, yeah. so maybe we'll have um, uh, we'll have we did some work in in France uh, with the other with some other Wi-Fi guys to create uh, our own association in France uh, to kind of promote the Wi-Fi technology and, and, and do our work in France. So maybe with that, uh, we'll, we'll come up with a podcast in the future, but uh, awesome. it's like you said, it's, it's, uh, it's time consuming. So <laughs> yes. you have to see, you know, people <laughs> interested in getting involved and all of that. Yeah. So I guess uh, I, I, when it comes to like, talking about time consuming and creating a podcast. So what we've learned 
from doing this mm-hmm. podcast. So I guess I'll start, right? What I've learned mm-hmm. is to be as organized as possible <laughs> and mm-hmm. have some topics listed or, or have some topics. Uh, it's basically, when you start doing this thing, you want to create a content calendar, which we don't often do, right, Francois? Because mm-hmm. um, it, it, we've tried and it becomes a challenge, especially when we were when we we're really diving into uh, Wi-Fi 6 and we got it. Mm-hmm when we got past some of those more common features uh, of Wi-Fi 6, then it started to get a lot more challenging when it was very, very technical and we couldn't use lab equipment to, or any equipment Mm -hmm. to kind of uh, verify it, right? And so that's Mm -hmm. where like the time consuming process uh, or, or the process itself is very time consuming because we need, we try to test everything that we talk about. And uh, with an episode that gets published every week, it's kind of hard to do those technical deep dives very often because we don't we don't like to kind of half it, right? We we don't want to just mm-hmm. uh, while we read the theory, we actually try to use it and and give our thoughts on how it works versus just what we read from from the standard or mm-hmm. what we read from a vendor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's, uh, and, and also the way we operate is we have these, um, like we often, we often talk to one another and then when, whenever we have an idea, we just throw it out there. Yeah. Uh, and then we're like, Oh, we should do an episode on this. We should do an episode on that. And that's kind of like how we operate. Um, uh, I guess how, how our brain works, uh, or, or it has to do with, ideas. with whatever job we mm-hmm. were doing. Right. And, and usually, mm-hmm. uh, that's how episodes get started is, Hey, I came across this, Let's talk mm-hmm. about it because it's fresh. Uh, so, yeah. and, and we like to talk about real world scenarios because you know you, you you can talk about theory all you want, but it's very different <laughs> once you once you get yeah. out there to a client site and they don't do it the way you are mm-hmm. taught to do it, right? Exactly, and I think it's it's more valuable for you guys, the listeners, as well, to understand how different engineers are doing things, right? Um, I always see the job as an engineer to just kind of find a, find a solution to a complex problem, find a technical solution to a complex problems. And it's not always going to be the same solution, right? So depending on the environment or what's going on, the requirements, whatnot, uh, we're going to have to come up with different solutions. So it's always nice to see and to hear about other engineers working on different things and coming up with different solutions. I think it's, it can help, um, it, it help us a lot to share that knowledge. Yeah. And, and again, this is why we put out that survey. So if you go to clear descend.net slash survey, uh, we do ask about what kind of topics you want to want to hear about. And that's how we also plan. Uh, Cause we, we, sometimes we try to record, a, uh, you know, batch record episodes so we can get ahead uh, rather than skipping a week. And, and there are times where we do skip a week, right? Francois, like either we're just too busy or it's a holiday, you know, it, it, I mean, it happens. We're not, we're not perfect. We don't do this full time. And, and, um, yeah, I mean, it's not our full time, mm-hmm. full time gig doing this podcast, but, uh, I mean, if we get to kind of the, a job or, or even just getting paid to, uh, you know, to, to recoup some of our efforts on this podcast and, and all the things that we spend on this podcast, we have created that first course. Uh, and so that was actually quite the learning process for us. Right. And, uh, mm-hmm. that's the first one that you and I have worked together on. And then we had to yeah. learn how to sell it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you, you actually attended, uh, last year, some sort of boot camp to, learn how to use the uh, the platform we're using for the yeah. course and then kind of learn how to create an online course get some idea from people who have done it in the past and so we started from there and then we we this year we took the time to create our first course so we like you said we learned a few things about it we wanted to make it the uh, our our goal was to make it totally different from uh the other online courses we wanted to make it more engaging um, with a little bit more interaction to just, you know, listening to a video, uh, before going to bed. So we tried, um, we tried to do that, 
adding some some sort of bonus to the course uh, uh when you when you um when you get the course you also get added to a, a private channel on the slack so you can interact with the other students uh we try to share some exclusive content uh with that with that channel as well that we don't share somewhere else so we, tr we try to make it a little bit uh, more interactive as much as we could encourage people to share what they're working on uh, and that was kind of like our our goal. We didn't want to just make an online course and, and call yeah. it a day. Um, so yeah. that and it was the first one. So, I mean, there's there's a lot to learn from in, in doing mm -hmm. a course, especially one that that people will like. And we weren't expecting it to be, uh, you know, like a, a huge hit. And we also don't even advertise it that much, which I think we, we, sh we mm -hmm. should – share it more often. But if, if you do go to courses.cleartosend.net, you'll see the single course that we have there right now. <laughs> and we do plan to make yeah. more. Uh, and and uh, we learn things like pricing and, and um, mm -hmm. the process of creating the course and making sure it's consistent throughout the course. There's things that we did together. So you and I don't even live near each other. So when we record things like this video that we're um, we're recording video for this episode, we have to do it in the same manner where we hope the delay between us isn't uh, like a, a big delay. And that this is why sometimes you hear us talk on top of each other because sometimes there is that delay, right? And and uh, mm -hmm. I mean it happens. Uh, we're we're working remotely as much as we can, and and we try to leverage the technology as much as possible. And that's what we try to incorporate with these courses: is all the technology we use. How do we make these on-demand uh, uh, computer-based training a little bit more tolerable, enjoyable, and more mm -hmm. affordable than the in-person? Especially when we can't do the in-person in a lot of different places, especially in the states. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And the, the online course we created as well, we uh, we want it to be uh, something different than what's available out there right now. So we, we that's why we called it the practical guide, because we wanted to call some, uh, create something that's very practical, that a lot of different tips that people could take and use on their next project right away. Yeah. Um, and so we, cheer, we shared a lot of uh, different techniques that we use in the field practical tips that uh, you could implement you know if you're if you're working on a wi-fi project you could implement right away uh, and if we focus the course on site surveys so you know uh, all the work we do on site measuring the signal and assess uh, assessing the signal and we talk about the technical aspect of it we talked about everything that's around it how to organize ourselves and 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 so on how to work in a team and so we we kind of packed all of these uh, practical tips into the course, and um, and uh, so that that's kind of like what we wanted to do, um, and and complement you know the other training that's available out there as well. Yeah, why don't you share some of the course numbers, Francois? Yeah, yeah so are so, we are we rolling um, in the dough here? No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we uh, overall we sold uh, well. We have an overall. Uh, enrollment number of 33 people so 33 people have enrolled in the course 32 of them paid so one was free and it was actually one of my customers because <laughs> i was working with them and I, I i gave it to them as a present uh so that's 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 my fault but uh most of the people uh purchased the course 32 people um we're still working on people, you know, uh, making it to the end. <laughs> so a lot of people purchased the course, but didn't actually finish it or even started it. So uh, right now we have two people that completed 100% of it and four people that are between 75 and 99%. Yeah. So you, we could say six people have finished the course yeah. uh, so far. I mean, I think that's um, par for the course with courses. <laughs> Uh, I do that too. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get a course and I won't even finish it. Or uh, I, I have some courses yeah. that I haven't started yet. And I think that's just kind of the, the self-discipline and, and the urgency of taking yeah. a course. And also we, um, like the course we created is quite long. Like it's yeah. not like a two hour course. Uh, so I think it's like 15, 16 hours, if I recall. Yeah, we put a lot um, of stuff in there. Yeah, so we put a lot of stuff in there. 
Uh, and so that's, I think that's one of, of the reasons. And maybe that's one of the uh, takeaway we can take from this course, something yeah. we can learn in the future, maybe create smaller courses or, you know, a series of smaller courses for, yeah. uh, maybe it's easier to digest for people. Yeah, it could be shorter video length, um, maybe more videos, mm -hmm. but shorter uh, or or maybe pe it depends on how people want to learn. And so we will dive mm -hmm. into some of that analytics and see what we can improve for future courses. So, I mean, that mm -hmm. that's it about courses. We're still pretty new at it. And I thought it was really uh, cool to do. Uh, it's a it's a fun experience. I found, um, especially mm -hmm. with training, because I'm not a former I'm not a formal trainer like you, Francois, and some of the other people who who do training uh, out there. But it was it was nice uh, to get some of that experience in. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, I guess you went through the process of developing a course and. And all of that, so you know, it takes a little bit of time. <laughs> it does. It does. Uh, yeah. On top I of creating podcasts. <laughs> yeah, I remember the very first time I developed a course for my for my company. I, I created like a Wi-Fi course for one of my customer, and it took me, I, I think it took me like two weeks uh, to create the course. That was like a two-day course. So wow. that's when I was I, I was first introduced to course development, and um, yeah, even though I'm I'm, I'm a little, you know, perfectionist. So I want everything to be perfect. So right, that's right. adding a bit more time. But I think when you have a court, when you create a course, it's important to, to make sure everything is, is nice. Um, and, uh, it, it does take some time to create the content, yeah. organize it, uh, come up with the slides, the content. And, and in our, in our case, we needed to, you know, create the content and then record the videos. Yeah. And then we validated each other's videos. Yeah. Um, and then we, we, you know, we, we had to publish it and organize it on the online platform. So it, it does take a little bit of time, but it, it's very rewarding when we have, you know, people uh, following the course, giving us feedback and supporting us, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very good experience and, and looking forward to doing more of those. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about how we've, so we do set goals at the beginning of the year, especially things like, mm -hmm. um, listeners and also social media stuff. So we've set goals to like grow the Twitter, uh, account, for example, like we have our own, but we do have the clear to send channel and we were, mm -hmm. we were trying to aim to get to about 3,500 followers. And the reason why we do this follower count is because it helps with um, engagement and also, uh, promoting the, the podcast. Right. And so, mm -hmm. uh, I guess when we last looked at this, we were at 2,606 and as of we, as of the show notes, we did, uh, we're at what, 3,190, um, mm -hmm. which we I actually just don't post that often to the clear to send account, which is probably, mm -hmm. uh, something, uh, we should do. It's usually when we have new, sh uh, a new show, we publish it, but we need to engage with others a little bit more from, from that account. Yeah. So we, I guess we, in, uh, we increased the account by 600, which is okay for the year. Yeah. Um, yeah I thought it was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good. We didn't reach our goal of 3,500, uh, but Maybe next year. We were close. Yeah. <laughs> we're close. Yeah. We weren't crazy going, um, Hey, let's go to 10,000 or something. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> but I mean, if you guys are listening and you're not following us on Twitter, you should, you should definitely follow us on Twitter yes. and help us reach that goal. <laughs> um, on, on the other end, on LinkedIn, um, we, we set out a, a goal for ourselves to hit a thousand followers and we started the year with 588. So we pretty much needed to double it and we reach it. We now have yeah. 1,049 followers. So we made our goal on LinkedIn, which was pretty nice. LinkedIn is another platform that we use to, uh, to kind of add, uh, you know, share what we do on the podcast. Yeah. It, it kind of makes sense with LinkedIn because it is business, uh, related on there. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, uh, it's, it's quite easy to find some business related content. So if you're on there and you're looking for Wi-Fi related stuff, we, you happen to f come across us. And, and again, it's just more mm -hmm. of where do you follow us and where do you want to see, th uh, 
content from us and that's where we're going to post it. And so that's part of the survey questions as well as which social media platform do you use the most? Maybe mm-hmm. we sh- maybe there's another one that we should probably be on, but we try to limit it so we can control it cuz manage it. Too, yeah, too yep. much and and I will it'll be a task uh, on itself uh, on top of creating podcasts. <laughs> mm-hmm. We'll need a social media manager. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. Wait. <laughs> That's us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so our, our main place of where we chat the, the most is Slack. And so we wanted mm-hmm. to grow that a little bit more and we had aimed to go to 400. So in the past we had 242 um, and, and currently we're at 441, which is great. And so we were able to get more people there and that had to do, I think, with also changing our website. We told people to go to the Slack channel and and we mm-hmm. shared that a lot more and and there we have really great conversations i think um that's a great uh platform to use to to make friends uh get to know people uh share whatever you want and because it's not strictly wi-fi right uh, we can talk about whatever we want mm-hmm. and it's a very open community so everyone respects each other uh very much there's no uh dumb question everyone helps each other uh, as much as possible uh, and, and I'm sure, uh, after this pandemic, we'll all get together at one of these conferences, maybe, uh, uh, yeah. who knows which, which one that will be, that'll be first. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, uh, sooner than later, that would be fun. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we also have an email list, uh, so you can subscribe to our email list and we, we send out, well, you send out, well, you take care of that, but you send out emails like once a week to uh, talk about the episode that we publish. And then um, once in a while, we send out emails for our surveys or for our courses uh, to let you know what, what we're working on. So that's a, we also have an email list and uh, we had the goal to grow it to a thousand people and we had 724 at the beginning of the year and we now have close to 900. So yeah, we're not so, quite there yet, but we still grew. Yeah. Yeah. So the purpose of the email list is it's, it's, um, it's our platform. Like we have that list. So we're not just tied to Twitter or LinkedIn. Cause if, if any of those guys go mm-hmm. away, then I, we can't reach out to you. Right. And, and it's a way if, if that's where you go to, to get all your, your content, then we, sometimes condense everything into an email. We also include some news. We'll give shout outs to people um, or, or anything that we want to share. Yeah. Contests, um, like giveaways. Uh, and it's, it's usually once a week, sometimes maybe uh, none a week. Cause <laughs> it depends how busy I am. I have to go mm-hmm. in there, create it and then send it out. Uh, and then other times there might be like two emails a week. So we try not to bombard you guys because even I know my email tends to get pretty busy, but if that's where you want your summary of what's happening at ClearSend, then that's where mm-hmm. we send it. Cause I know like Twitter, I don't, uh, while I do, Twitter, I am on there quite a bit in Slack, but sometimes I just blow everything and I can go back easily to like email and be able to, to see what's there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's also, I mean, for us, we don't really use it that way, but maybe for us, it, it can also become a marketing tool in the future, uh, something we could use if we, if we need to, I guess, uh, even though we don't really use it that way uh, today. Uh, but yeah, talking about that subject, uh, I wanted to circle back on the courses because that's pretty much the only, uh, I guess, money we make from doing the podcast. So I wanted to thank you uh, guys for purchasing the class, whoever purchased the class. We had we did a sale for uh, Thanksgiving, and we had um, quite a bit of people purchasing the course at that time. So, we uh, really appreciated it, and it's um, it's it's uh, it's supporting us as well in and all the time we put and all the effort we put in a, in the podcast. Yeah. So uh, me and Francois split the 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 revenue, and some of that goes back to paying the operations of the podcast, mm-hmm. whether that's equipment or the software services that we use. And, um, it's just a way for us to, uh, uh, to compensate uh, ourselves for the time that we put into this. It's also encouraging cause it makes me want to do more of this, uh, and focus more on, on the podcast, be able to spend more time doing it where, uh, mm-hmm. 
it, it's almost like a, like a, we're running a business, right? Um, it's its own separate business. Uh, but, uh, if I can spend more time doing the podcast, I would definitely do it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I, and also I guess talking about the new year and some of the objectives we would have for the podcast is, uh, we, sometimes we talk about it, you and I, but, um, and, and sometimes we have ideas of things we want to do, yeah. but we don't necessarily have the time of the budget. So if, if we could have like partnership with some companies or brands that would just come and, and back us up for those projects, maybe we could spend more time, you know, working on this project alongside with a brand partnering with a brand and then do come up with a project and then share, share all of that with, with the podcast that would be great if if you're listening and you have some marketing budget you want to spend just call us <laughs> and we'll see if we can partner up on something um exactly yeah and, and it's more than yeah. just a sponsored episode right because i don't like sponsored mm-hmm. episodes where somebody just kind of talks and uh it, it has this uh idea of like hey our stuff is really cool let's just throw it down at you, you listen to it and then you buy it from us. Like we want to be more engaging and actually use the product. Uh, so we like to use things and try to put them in a scenario and then give you that content, like give you our opinion on it. And, and we want to try to take that a little bit further by partnering with some companies in order to give you more value versus, a uh, just telling you about a product. Cause, uh, I don't know about you. I just don't listen that much to sponsored episodes in that way where all they're mm-hmm. going to talk about is, uh, you know, this, this, uh, Wi-Fi system and how cool it is and, and how it'll solve all of your issues when I haven't even tried it. Right. I, I just don't feel like I can promote something mm-hmm. like that. If, if I just have to agree, yeah. like, Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That, that works. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's more valuable for the listeners if we come up with some innovation way to use the product and try to uh, you know do some tests that no one has done or maybe some bring some values or bring it in the real world and and kind of giving our real world experience of how a different product works um, and then maybe you know, make it fun, right? If it, if you make it fun and, uh, try to uh, innovate a little bit, uh, it's, it's more interesting for people as well. Yeah. We want to make things a little bit more fun and engaging for you where it's not just, uh, us talking all the time. You could see things and see how it works while we try to be Mm -hmm. as descriptive as possible. So you can tell that we've been, we've been doing more video because, um, I've been finding that a lot of people prefer the video. So we record on both platforms, both audio and on our YouTube channel. And uh, there are times where we do have something to share on, on video. And this is where we start learning about making videos, right? Because as we produce something like this, I have to do both audio and video. I'm recording in two different places. And, and as we try to record, we have to be descriptive for you, the listener on the audio side of things. So you know what we're talking about, but I do know that as people talk about web interfaces and and things that need visual representation, Mm -hmm. it it can be hard to just kind of follow that via audio, which is why we try to record it Mm -hmm. simultaneously. So you could see it and hear it. You can kind of go back. So if you, if you, if there's a topic you're listening to, you can go, Oh, Hey, uh, let me pause and I'll go check it out on video when I have a chance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It makes me think of the episode we did with Silona where they were showcasing their demo and how to configure the system. So it's you're right, it, the video brings a lot of value in those type of episodes because we can actually see and follow along what's going on. And because it's a video, you can go back on the YouTube channel just, uh, you know, and, and watch them. Oh, talking about YouTube channel, you, we, did, uh, we did good on the YouTube channel as well this year. Uh, Try to create more video content. Um, uh, and, uh, so if you guys, if you guys want to check out the videos as well, you should go to YouTube, just search for clear to send and you'll find, yeah. uh, you'll find those videos as well. So if you just go to youtube.com slash clear, clear to send, you, that should bring you there. And, mm-hmm. um, so we'll start adding more videos there as well, especially with, um, the stuff. I mean, that last one we did, uh, episode, f- uh, 248 
was a pretty popular mm -hmm. one because that had a lot of visualization that you needed to see. Um, but that's yes. what we're trying to aim for. Right. And that's why we ask you, um, uh, are asking you guys to fill out the survey so we can try to create more of this content that, that is relatable, relevant, mm -hmm. uh, into what you do. Uh, and that way you can improve as well. Like we improve as we do this podcast and, and, um, and, and do the content, but it's also for you guys to improve Wi-Fi throughout the world, right? You guys are, we have an international listener base and we'd like to see Wi-Fi get better everywhere because uh, there's still a lot of Wi-Fi that needs help. For sure, for sure. All right, so I think I think this year was great. Also something we didn't know, uh, we didn't uh, talk about, but um, to me that was important. We had some uh, interviews with the uh, WFA, the Wi-Fi Alliance, with the uh, WBA, the Wireless Broadband Alliance, um, and I think these um, these it's it's nice to see those big organization interacting with us, the engineers, uh, and we had great discussions with um, with the, the, you know with the, during those podcasts, and it's not done, right? We're still in contact. Yeah. We might have more coming, so it's nice to see um, to see these interactions, and uh, I was very pleased for for these episodes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It, it's great to. Um, reach out to these people and have them come on and, and be able to understand what their thought process is for a lot of these things. Well, that's pretty much our right. episode. We'll post more of like our goals and intentions for 2021 on the show notes. So if you head over to mm -hmm. clear to send.net slash two fifty, you'll be able to, to find that there. And uh, this is the last episode of 2020, I believe. Uh, <laughs> I think it is. Mm -hmm. And so we wish you guys a happy new year. You guys stay safe and uh, we will see you in 2021. Awesome. Bye guys. Hopefully 2021 is better than 2020. Yes, let's hope so. <laughs> let's hope. <laughs> we will happy new year's guys. Thank you for listening. Yeah, we'll thank we'll you make guys. it better for sure. Bye. <laughs> See you. Cheers.